One of the reasons that we're doing a Q&A through Skype like we are is, of course, because of this epidemic in our country, pandemic around the world, the coronavirus. Um, I wonder how the coronavirus has affected maybe you personally or, or how it's affected CLA. Well, it, we have been inundated. We're getting about 300 plus calls a day on the legal issues mm. of the coronavirus affecting Christians and churches. Uh, one of the things that has been most distressing is communities are saying we can keep uh, necessities open, okay? But they're saying abortion clinics are necessities. Uh, places where they're selling marijuana and drugs, that's necessities. Mm. Uh, people are saying uh, pornographic places are necessities. Wow. The church is a necessity. That's an incredibly dangerous statement. When you say the church, which is the most important thing in anyone's life, everybody understands life has a start point and an end point, and then comes eternity. And so we have been battling so this coronavirus, and then our church is wanting to be good citizens, wanting to be careful, not wanting to do what would spread this virus. And it's a dangerous, dangerous virus. There's no question about that. But we are now having to battle and help churches. We're having sheriffs come out and say, well, you can't even meet with your people. We've had churches drive in in the parking lot and the pastor stands on a platform and meets. You've heard of all the alternatives. And, and we're defending the right to be able to do these things. But praise God, we've had some marvelous, marvelous victories. Uh, the state of Colorado had come out uh, with a very liberal governor and said, you know, we're banning church meetings. But then he changed and he came back and he said, no, I'm lifting that. And mm -hmm. so we're lifting it where churches can meet. And he said pastors can go about their ministerial duties and be protected by the law. We are praying. One of the things that our ministry does is we work hard, but we pray hard. And we're no, encouraging not. people. Boy. You have not because you ask not. If there was ever a time to pray, now's the moment. Because we, we do not want to lose these precious liberties we have. So yes, the coronavirus has touched us. Uh, I'm reaching you from home right now, although our office is open, but we're very careful with who we let in the office, what we do, because we want to be responsible Christian citizens not to spread this. Uh, I shared this with you, Pastor, when, when I was eight years of age, uh, my mother got polio, mm -hmm. and it really changed our lives. Uh, I was quarantined as an eight, ten-year-old boy in our house for wow. months. Ago. A huge orange sign, I can still see it in our front yard, saying, quarantine, stay away, polio. Wow. And people coming down the street would go to the other side just to go past our house. Mm -hmm. And I went to the funerals of doctors and nurses who died taking care of my mom. Wow. And my dad, as we sit there, he'd say, I don't ever want you to forget. These people died so your mom has a chance to live. Mm -hmm. Don't you forget that. These frontline soldiers, these medical workers that we're sending in to deal with this, if that doesn't strike a heart of compassion, right. and if you pray for those people, Something is woefully wrong with our heart and our spirit. Yeah. Uh, every time I see something like this, all of these memories come flooding back. Mm. Uh, my mom was in the hospital for over two years. Wow. And I marvelously used her later in life. She, she couldn't walk. Polio struck us hard. Mm. But it didn't change our faith. And I'm telling everybody right now, if there was ever a moment that God's people ought to stand up and say, we're going to be the prayer warriors for America. We're going to be the ones who pray for these that are giving their lives. Now's the moment. Amen. Amen. And one thing that I tell Christians, this is the most exciting hour to be a Christian, I believe, that's ever existed in the history of our country, including our founding. And our founding fathers went through a trying time. They could never have imagined or dreamed what we're going through. And so tell everybody, this is our moment to stand up and stand true. So excite. Now, we're going to need God's power. These things are frightening. This pandemic 
is frightening. But ours is not a spirit of fear. Right. And heart just goes out to all these unsafe people around the world, and in particular in America, trying to face this. I asked myself, what would I, what would I be doing if I didn't have Christ to face this? I know when that polio epidemic hit my house, it hit a Christian home. Mm. I watched people literally that weren't saved or got hit with polio just fall apart. Mm -hmm. The bottom right now is this is our moment to rise and shine. That's why I'm excited. The only hope America has is not CLA. And I give my life to the Christian Law Association. The only hope America has is the local church and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's why what you're doing, Pastor, is so hypercritical. Our hope is the church and the gospel. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you just benefited from that content, I'd like you to do two things. Our church media team regularly publishes additional Christ-centered content. So the first thing I'd like you to do is subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single video. And the second thing I'd like you to do is share this video with others so that they also can benefit from Christ-centered content, all right? So these two things, subscribe and share, and thank you.